scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be known. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the I want you to be very sensitive now. You have prayed. Let me pray for you. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Sir, ordinarily I would have told you this maybe privately in the office, but the Lord is asking me to say it in the open. I just saw a vision and I saw you and your wife, and I saw it was like two ships, and you were walking and you had gotten to the end of one ship, and I saw a hand stretched and it held you to another ship and it began to move. I believe, I'm not this answer, I believe that another phase of ministry you hear what I'm saying go and write it down in addition to what you are currently doing another strange apostolic and, dim and prophetic dimension of ministry is opening because this instruction to pray for a long time there are many things that God has not said yet that by, by the end of it, he will tell why he called for a fast like this. Just believe me that this fasting is midwifing one season into another. That's why God is saying, I should say it openly, so that the day he tells you, they will know that it's not you that just said it. That's why I'm saying it in the open. Ordinarily, I may just go and tell him in the office. I saw a hand like a sheep, sheep. And just held him and another season so don't you be surprised what will come out by revelation in the course of this fasting do not think it is the flesh but hear me it is another dimension of ministry this is true it is another dimension of ministry and there are three very strong anointings that will in multiplied dimensions would start working in the life of this man and his wife number one is the teaching grace number two is the healing grace number three is the prophetic grace these three graces in strong dimensions you would begin to see testimonies and manifestations of the hand of God this word would not fail 
it will happen by the spirit the second thing I want to say and I apologize again God is asking me to say it and I'm saying it in the open your membership have not yet come the people you are raising are leaders by the time the leaders are raised it will be like an inferno of fire the kind of training you are giving these people is not for membership there is a strengthening they are building capacity because the oil stops when there is no more vessel and so he's listen many of you here you think you are just members of a ministry you are the leaders he's building capacity when he's done it was when the ark was ready that the animals started coming they don't come to wait until the ark i'm speaking this by prophecy an ark of three stories of gopher wood is being built even in this ministry and with this man and when that ark is done the same grace that brought the animals on their own they came two by two and seven by seven they will come by the spirit it will be a wonder to behold what God can do with a man who hears him give Jesus praise now I want to pray for you do you believe in the power of God second Corinthians please stand sir please second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 listen after tonight you must do well to go and invite everybody you know look at what I mean as you are here I'm sure some of you is paining you right now that my loved ones should be here I was glad when they said unto me let us go not let me go let us go It's wrong when you are going alone it is let us go anything that is godly is always let us let us make let us go and God is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in how many things may abound unto every good work let me explain this scripture that means God is able to coordinate every grace you need and to bring it within your reach this scripture is based on the principle that what is on you is what controls what is around you your results are a report card telling us what is on you or not on you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but I know the size of what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is overflowing it means what is on me is overflowing so the physical results in your life are attestations to the grace the kind and the level of grace that you carry are we together you can know that the grace that is upon you has multiplied by the results that change you can know what kind of grace you carry by the testimonies that recycle around your life they are receipts when they change something changed are we together meetings like this by the Spirit of God leads us to pray but then it gives us an opportunity to be able to take something upon our heads that we did not come to church with you can carry something that you did not come with the Bible says when the donkey of Kish was missing they went three days this young man called Saul hmm. and after three days when they did not find it he said let's return back he said no we've left too much there is a seer let us go to that man the word of the Lord does not fail and as soon as they saw Samuel I was so blessed when your man of God made a profound statement he said God's strategy is man it's not a lie when the devil wants to destroy you he introduces a man when God wants to help you he introduces a man in any case it will still be by the ministry of man are we together we are nothing on our own 
except for the graces that we carry listen the grace of God is a mysterious advantage when it comes upon a man with understanding it can turn the narrative of your destiny in one day when they met Samuel look at a problem that was costing them so much difficulty but as soon as they met a man look at how he trivialized that problem Samuel said no go up I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started returning home nobody asked the donkey to return home as soon as Saul met with Samuel be careful what you call impossible there are graces that have been anointed to trivialize your challenges and make it look as if the devil does not exist three things happen when Saul met with Samuel number one he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and he poured oil on his head and said three things will happen to you number one the ass the donkey that has been missing you will find out that restoration has happened the anointing can bring restoration that means just because it left you does not mean it left the earth it is still there under a certain condition it can come back number two he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaves of bread they will salute you and they will give it to you as if they did not know what to do with the bread they bought bread and were on their way home but because of what was on you they will give you two loaves say favor say honor number three it says you will come to a garrison of the Philistines and when you get there something will happen to you and you will now begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that they said is Saul when did Saul who trained you we know how long it took for us to be prophets by what mystery did you access this anointing that by April you will invite someone and say come to my house and you'll be driving very far thinking is where he knew you to be the last time you met and he will tell you no 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 I forgot to tell you I'm no longer there listen can I tell you this please hear me I believe in diligence I believe in process but there is a prophetic advantage to living can I tell you this true dominion the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not things time you are truly walking in dominion when you can compress time and I will restore not the things the years let me tell you how God restores and I will pray with you I hope I'm not wasting your time that means you see in the presence of God there's nothing like past present and future that's a reality that only resides within the realm of men he only broke his realm into this tripartite the trinity of time past present and future to help mankind relate with him but God does not live in time he does not even live in eternity because eternity is also time it's just time without end God's realm is called now everything is a present reality you see in truth so when God reaches into what you call he can go into your yesterday and your tomorrow you see physically when you leave yesterday you don't go back again that privilege was not given to men ordinarily except by the gifts of the spirit and you can tap into information but from a physical standpoint when it's gone it's gone but God will find out based on his predeterminate counsel listen carefully how God restores the things that should have happened to you because with every time God gives you there are things that should have happened if by demonic manipulation or your ignorance or carelessness that thing did not happen God will go back into it and push the thing to your future and make it happen again 
are we together so if by God's predetermined counsel you should be in your own house by 2018 but by lack of sensitivity you did not take advantage of the prophetic word that came from the man of God maybe at that time you were not serious spiritually and you trivialized the word you see that now the house you are building now is not the same one that should have come so what God does is that instead of you going through the labor of building it he can fix that rep that blessing under a class of blessings called prepared blessings hear me there are times that God will send rain on your farm and the crops will grow well you will do the harvesting and the storage but there are times the urgency in your life does not require corn it requires bread directly both corn and bread it is still the same God who sends it God is able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater what if the sower is hungry because there are times the sower is hungry and he will need to eat to have the strength to go and sow so God gives you bread so that from the strength of that bread you can go and sow are you learning now believing that the only channel of God's blessing is your farm you are limiting his potentials manna can come from heaven manna coming from heaven does not stop you from sowing it's an act of his mercy to make sure you are satisfied early then you go and sow your name is to be hallowed I spent one month it was a February sir the whole of that one month I was praying and studying on favor because I didn't come from a background that would easily give me that privilege and I knew that if I were to do ministry with integrity I would need the favor of God when I found the keys and found the grace I knew this was it I want to pray some prayers for you now and I want you to receive it listen you will thank your man of God and you will see the sincerity and the love in his heart after this meeting and the testimonies that follow listen it takes more than desire to excel the kind and the quality of grace that is upon you when we honor men we don't honor bodies we honor the sacrifice of alignment alongside the election of grace that has captured this vast dimension of graces upon their lives are we together I want to pray for this grace for favor number one Exodus 11 and verse 3 please give us Exodus 11 and verse 3 and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people notice if it is favor it works with the power of sight that means when the favor of God is upon you the only person who should not bless you is a blind man the moment they can make contact with you they are compelled by an anointing hold on the reason why Moses was great was that it was in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of the people when favor comes on you both the king and the people see you in a way that is deserving of favor Exodus 3 21 and I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the Egyptians what is the proof of the favor and it shall come to pass that when ye go prophesy to yourself I shall not go empty Exodus 3 
Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part and Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her not them who wanted to favor her your mistake was just to look the moment you can look the anointing works by the power of sight please I'm not just exciting you believe in what I'm telling you she obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 same chapter read verse 17 if you're a Christian one to read and the king loved Esther above stop above above that means before Esther came there were others he was looking at but as soon as she showed up he loved them but he loved her above and she obtained grace and favor again in his more than all the virgins so that he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti are you ready to receive I want to pray for you now the power of God will come on you you don't have to kneel just believe there is a lady here who is going to shout right now a loud shout under the anointing the moment that happens that grace for favor will begin to move across this is what I just saw in the spirit the power of God is coming on it you it's not something you can stand it is it is these are dynamics of the anointing a loud shout is an anointing of the spirit that will come right now I'm ready to pray for you now father in the name of Jesus Christ by the spirit of the living God can help them please I decree right now may that grace and that unction my goodness let it come upon you right now take that grace take that grace take that anointing help that lady please supernatural favor i decree and declare i place it as a mantle upon your head go and excel i shift systems and structures by the power of prophecy may that grace rest upon you find favor with systems find favor with structures find favor with egyptians find favor with kings in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hallelujah there is honor is a grace listen you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another honor is a grace that is transferable do you know what is, is honor honor means to be seen for who you truly are and to be rewarded to match the true worth of your person that's what honor means favor means to be preferred but honor means to be given the regard that befits your sacrifice you can be great but if honor is not on you you will not be rewarded to match your true worth let me show you a scripture numbers 27 from verse 18 to 20 let's hurry up for time we're wrapping up now the Lord said unto Moses take the Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit already 
and lay your hands upon him is that in your bible verse 2 it says set him before Eliaza the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 please read it if you're a Christian one to read and thou shalt put some of your honor on him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient people don't listen to you just because you are sincere there is honor that comes upon you call Moses he's already filled with the Holy Spirit but lay your hands upon him and then in anointing him don't leave him like that transfer some of your honor to him honor is transferable can I pray for you father just help those under the anointing I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God may that grace right now may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ that grace for honor everything that has despised your grace everything that has despised the investment of God upon your life I change that narrative by this mantle in the name of Jesus Christ help them please in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah who is Joseph Joseph I'm hearing a name Joseph who is that Joseph we're wrapping up what do you do my friend What do you hold on? What do you do? What do you do? Who is a who is a music minister here? You is, is he a member? Huh? You sing. Listen to me. You see that prayer on the iron gate? Go and pray that prayer when you go back. I want to pray for you because truly God wants to lift you. But this this is not just by human connections is not what this is by the spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may that grace that gives visibility something is coming on you right now take that grace now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same take that grace by the power of the holy spirit I, 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 God is there anybody here that works in access bank access bank access bank oh I know him I didn't even know he was one There are strange liftings that are coming to people in this place I stretch my hands three of you you don't have to kneel in the name of Jesus Christ I place an anointing upon you that in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ this grace for favor let it come upon you right now for your lifting you take that grace find favor even with your administrators in the name of Jesus and every conspiracy of darkness to implicate you we cancel it right now by the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers I want to release the grace for speed 
truly there is a grace for speed now hear me I don't know how we're going to do it I just have maybe less than two three minutes and I'm done thank you for your patience with me but I want to release this grace from the depth of my heart I told you true dominion is dominion over time now whether you are an usher or not please help me in this prayer because the hand of God will come on people and they will start running physically I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves and you can bring them out right now I stretch my hands this this ministry would be characterized by and with a strange order of speed I stretch my hands at the count of three my God I'm just seeing fire rest on people please bring those under the anointing right now at the count of three one bring them up two three take that grace now help them speed speed help them please my God speed speed receive that grace and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab I command speed speed in business speed in ministry speed in career I cause the root of delay by the power that raised Christ from the dead I cause a bakato shedegata receive speed receive speed receive speed in the name of Jesus Christ you'll never be the same speed 10 years in one year 10 years I prophesy 10 years in one year the results of 10 years in one year 10 years in one year in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman please in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God in three months from today according to the mystery of the ark in the house of Obed Edom I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak to you between now and the next three months I shift you to a new season help them I shift you to a new season hear me we're wrapping up that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened the chronicles and he saw where Mordecai had saved the life of the king and was not rewarded hear me many of you have been part of the success story of many and yet you've been forgotten I stand by prophecy let the book of remembrance be open now there is an anointing coming on your wife sir I'm seeing an angel pour like oil on her and the Lord is saying she's entering a season of reward this is what I'm seeing in the spirit she's entering a strange season of reward let me say it again anyone who has forgotten you I stand in partnership with the grace of your man of God may that book of remembrance be opened now is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake in the name of Jesus the son of the living God by this fire that is coming upon you I decree and declare wherever the helpers of your destiny are in this Abuja I speak to the north I speak to the east I speak to the south I speak to the west I command them to show up for you now
Alléluia. Last prayer point. Please hear me. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. It says, believe in his prophets. So shall you prosper. Can I tell you this? There are different dimensions and levels of wealth. There is wealth that comes by providing value. There is wealth that comes by relationships. But there is wealth that comes by prophecy. He says, by this time tomorrow. And when he said it, the one who the king leans on said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, might this happen? I want to pray for you. Praying the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness. However, in this kingdom, we are not just left with economic principles. There is a superior advantage that in addition to the value that we provide, in addition to the relationships that come based on our impacting lives, my life is a testimony. I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. I pray for you finally. In this prayer session of fasting and praying. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. The same grace that took a raven. And it brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith. The same grace that took coin and put it in the mouth of a fish. The same grace that turned five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people with 12 baskets remaining. By the power of the prophetic, in the name of Jesus, I connect you to strategic relationships. <laughs> strategic relationships in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let me encourage, particularly those who have come here for the first time, since God has brought you here, make it a commitment to commit yourself in prayer. Commit yourself. If just one meeting brought you this kind of impact, you can imagine what happens. He say, ye who have continued with me. And so let me lend my voice with your man of God to encourage you that more and more people continue to come and experience the good hand of God and that you have the staying power and the stamina to finish through in the name of Jesus. For those of you who have been exhausted, let fresh strength be supplied. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.